I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going to return to our data engineering playlist, and we're going to look at formatting numbers and dates using the vb.net format function, uh, a function that's also found in csharp.net. And uh, this is one of the things that people have to do in all of their application design or analytics or whatever. You always have to format numbers and dates, and sometimes it can be a hassle, but luckily the format function in vb.net is extremely handy. So let's get to our number formatting in vb.net. Okay, so I've started a new console application uh, project in .NET, uh, vb.net with uh, uh, .NET Core 3.1 and uh, it's put in the hello world in there so that you can run it and get some feedback so you can see it runs it. It uh, puts hello world at the top and then uh, and then it says press any key to close. Uh, so um, this is what we'll do. We'll run these and I can run some examples for you using the format function. So let's get rid of that uh, hello world in there and uh, we can go ahead and, and add some of our own code. Put a comment at the top, some number formatting um, in vb.net. Um, the exact same function applies in C Sharp. Uh, so you could also use this in your C Sharp projects if you're using C Sharp. Um, and uh, we can get going. So at first I'll make a variable and I'll just call this DEC as a decimal and uh, so that'll give us a, a number that we can plug into our format function. So the function itself takes, it can take an object, so you can actually put in an integer or decimal or whatever, um, and it'll try to format it um, if it can. Um, so I'll call my uh, decimal DEC, and it's 12345.45, and then I'll make a, a str return for my, my return string, and uh, and then I'll just say uh, my return string is um, is uh, format, and then so you use the format, and then you just plug in uh, your input, and then specify the the type of uh, formatting that you want in the return. And so we'll use n for our first time round, and uh, here we go. And n is for standard numbers. Oh, I didn't put a console.write line. Hang on a second. We'll go back and put a, a write line in there uh, so that we can actually see our feedback. So console.write line, and then we'll put uh, our number uh, is equal to, uh, and then we'll, we'll just put the uh, return string that we got uh, from the format function. And we'll run that again. And there you go at the top. You can see our number. And standard format puts the comma in after um, after three uh, in after the hundreds in between thousands, and uh, and it puts two decimal places to the right of it, and uh, and that's sort of the general uh, the sort of general stand or I should say standard number, and uh, but we can change that and we could say we wanted to say uh, see currency we can put C for currency, and if I run that one. And we get kind of the same thing, but we get a dollar sign, and that adds. Uh, and if there's uh, more than um, several digits after the um, after the decimal point, it will re it will truncate those, or uh, so that the uh, uh, so that it matches for a currency. And uh, that might change according to your regional settings as well. So our next example, we'll put in a, a variable called PCT for percent. And I'll make that one uh, 0 0.4512. And uh, for that one, <clears throat> you can actually uh, just type in uh, P for percent. And, uh, and so we can say our return variable is equal to format PCT as our input. And we can put percent in there. And, uh, and that's going to give us a percentage. Um, uh, so times it by 100 and uh, it'll put the percent sign at the end, which is a nice display uh, that you can use uh, in your project there. And uh, 
moving on from, from that. You can actually just plug the P, uh, a small P in there as a short form, and it will return the same thing, percent up there. Um, so that gives a nice easy way of doing it as, a, as kind of a shortcut. And I would say uh, there's uh, one thing to note, you know, if you do have a, a great level of precision, and uh, you have lots of numbers after that, and you use P, it might return only two uh, as the uh, result. And if you need more than that, you can do a custom, uh, you can do a custom formatting, um, which I'll show you a little bit of at the uh, closer to the end of this video here. Um, so say we wanted to change it up. Say we wanted our uh, scientific uh, notation. So we had some really huge numbers. Uh, in there and we wanted to return a scientific notation then we can uh, we can do that um, just by um, using the scientific uh, formatting and to do that uh, we'll type in format and then we'll plug in our our science variable there our SCI variable and we'll just type in scientific and uh, then we can hit go hit F5 on our keyboard and that's going to pull up a scientific notation um, for the number that we put in. And uh, that will be handy for anyone that's dealing with very large numbers. Um, and uh, uh, moving on, uh, say we want to force some zeros after our number. So say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.4 but we want to show dollars and cents. Uh, so we wanted two decimal places or something like that, then we can do a custom formatting um, to show that. Um, and uh, you could probably just use currency for that, uh, but we can do it using uh, custom formatting, uh, using, <clears throat> in this case, the number sign, and uh, zeros, uh, which you can see will uh, we'll put it into the format that we want so we can see our zero on the end there um, to two decimal places. And that's, uh, that's a handy uh, way of doing it. Um, so I'll put back in the original one that we did just so that we can see it here. The original one was using N for the standard number and, uh, and then we can move on. Well we can also format some percentages um, using custom formatting. Um, so say we wanted to do uh, another percentage uh, calculation but we wanted to you know put in our own parameters um, so we could have a decimal for that say five say it was a really big percentage and uh, we could put in um, <clears throat> 0, .00, 0.00 uh, with the percent sign on the end as a custom format and then oh I put in the wrong it's PCT2 and uh, and then I'll save that and run it and you can see that'll um, that'll give us 500%, uh, which is what we wanted to see there. So what if you wanted to format a date? Well, you can also format dates using the format function. Um, so I'll create a date here. I'll call it DTE, and uh, I'll put it in as a, uh, as a literal date. So we'll use our hashtags um, around it. Um, so I'll say uh, 12, 3, uh, 2021 which is a US date format um, and uh, that'll, that'll also have time on it um, which we'll see here in a minute um, that's your literal characters there and uh, so that's going to create a variable stuffed with that uh, <laughs> stuffed with that variable or with that value in there and uh, we'll say our format formatting DTE and then we'll choose a formatting. We could choose, uh, there are several in there. We could say long date. Um, and then we could <clears throat> hit F5 and that'll spit out a long date uh, with the uh, month in it. This will uh, also depend on your regional settings. Uh, so if you are in, in a different region, you might see a different long date with different languages and things like that. Um, but uh, you can also plug in the values, so very common uh, date format here, which is uh, unambiguous in English, is uh, uh, 
with the three character month alphanumeric month in the middle so that you cannot uh, you cannot uh, misinterpret that date um, which is important for a lot of different scenarios and make sure that you use the the upper case M for month um, so that you'll get 2021 12.03 and uh, you can also put in dashes like we were saying so you could put in uh, a dash in there and that'll uh, give a different format um, the small M is for minutes I believe um, so so make sure that you put the right case in uh, you might get stuck on that so what about time so uh, you know we might want to have time in our expression uh, coming out of there and you can do that simply by adding uh, the HH uh, for hours, MM for minutes and seconds and then TT on the end for uh, your AM PM and that'll spit out uh, uh, the amount so that date had no time on it um, so it gives you uh, midnight um, so you can display that also as uh, a 20, 24 hour clock in this case it would be 0000, 000, 000, 000 so maybe we can go back and change that and uh, make it a little bit better for display so we'll add a time onto our literal date so we'll say 2345 uh, in our literal date and uh, now when we run that we can see okay it gives us our 2345 as a 24-hour clock uh, but we could change that and we could go back and add our um, <clears throat> our small HH in there for the 12-hour clock and uh, add TT in there for uh, AM and PM and that'll give you your 1145 PM you could remove the seconds if you want to remove the seconds um, so that it's a little bit nicer to read it depends on what kind of reporting you're doing or the output that you want and and you could also just report the time so you see I removed the uh, the time or the date there and just reported the time and uh, that's very flexible and that's how you format numbers and dates in .NET using the format function. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use number formatting in VB.NET if you like what you saw today, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and click the bell when you see the bell. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.